Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Hunter the Hunter Mackin, and welcome back to Super Mario World. Okay, I was actually a little bit confused because uh, it just didn't. I, I didn't remember honestly where we left this off when I played that uh, last time. And uh, sorry if the image looks uh, different from last time. Actually, I think it should probably look a bit better than last time because. Um, well, I recorded the uh, the first couple of episodes of Star Fox Adventure, uh, so that's an ongoing series right now, and uh, uh, and there was some, there was some weird issues with the capture device. Uh, it was it was showing the image, uh, the image was looking really weird. So the reason we're coming back to this one, uh, well, I mean this level, but actually, yeah. So why am I? Um, why did I br bring this game back? Because I, well, you know, I, I did, I had always kind of intended that maybe at some point I would bring, uh, you know, come back to play this game again. But I wasn't going to, like, lose sleep over it if, if it was going to be just a one-off. But since I have the safe game and whatever, uh, you know, you know, there was no reason not to uh, bring it back. Uh, wait a minute. Where is the, uh... oh, th there it was. Okay. Yeah, so, because there was no reason, you know, uh, not to come back. And also, this year, uh, uh, my friend Ken, aka Aqualon Game Reviews, uh, oof, alright, I, I, I'm gonna wait for the, uh, for my feather to come back before we go through the game. Uh, he, he made a, a walkthrough video of this game. And honestly, I ended up in a bit of a Mario World kick. Now, so the th funny part is that this entire summer, more or less, uh, this, uh, and I'm not gonna, you know, uh, risk losing my, you know, ooh, <laughs> I'm not gonna risk losing my feather just, just for this shit. So, uh, so, forget the P, P switch. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got on a bit of a Mario World kick, and, um, but my SNES has pretty much been at my sister's this entire summer, and then I only got, only recently got it back when I came back from, uh, from my most recent trip. Uh, and you know the school year's beginning, so um, I decided, well, I, if I if I'm gonna do anything with the Super Nintendo video wise, I might as well do it now. So I don't know yet how far into this game. Okay, there we go. Something going on with the game pad that was weird. Okay. I guess the problem is technically the fact that I'm also holding the run button. That's just a Mario instinct of mine. So I don't know how far into the game we're going to uh, play this time around. Uh, I doubt we're going to finish, but... Um, yeah, but I, I thought I might as well play a little ways again into this. Because honestly, yeah, I've been in a bit of a Mario World kick. And uh, it's just funny because... Like I said, this isn't really one of my favorite Mario games or anything, but, you know, after watching Aqualum's video on it, um, uh, you know, I, I just meet it, I have just been feeling like I really just want to play this again. And honestly, I'm actually, like, even thinking maybe I should do Super Mario Sunshine. That might not necessarily be as much fun, though. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, I don't want to hit this one in case it has a fire flower. Because the ideal situation through most of this game, is that you want to have, you know, either a Fire Flower, or the, uh, or that, or the, uh, the Feather, and then just alternate between which one you want to use at any one time. Uh, okay. I don't know if that was just a carryover. I thought when you did the screw jump as little Mario, it didn't, wasn't supposed to kill the Buzzy Beetles, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, so... And, uh, yeah, and it's just, you know, it's just, oh, God. Yeah, it's, it, it also, like, you know, this is a fun game, so, you know. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Ooh. And it's funny, I noticed that, you know, uh, we, we hadn't gotten the Red Switch Palace anyway, so, yeah, it worked out. It worked out fine. Yeah. I will have to say, like some of the 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 difficulty definitely spikes up a, quite a bit. Not quite yet. I think yeah. Once we hit the Forest of Illusions, that's where it gets really really big. And the other thing is like you know how uh, in Mario 
Super Mario Brothers 3, there are, you know, worlds with, um, for each of the Koopalings. I think it's kind of stupid how here... Well, if Vanilla Dome is still, like, a decently large, uh, world, if you will, or at least, like, a part of the, uh, game world. Uh, which I think has always kind of been a bit of an ironic thing, like, you have all these big, vast lands in the Mario 3, and then you just, basically, it's just a bunch of islands, uh, you know, <laughs> in this, in this, like, shindig. Uh, but, you know, um... I don't think there's an alternate path here. One of these pipes might take me somewhere, but uh, I'm not gonna try to find out. Yeah. So yeah. So I've been wanting to do this for the longest time, but then, you know, uh, it was my brother-in-law who requested that I do Star Fox Adventures as well. And don't get me wrong, like, I'll, I'll definitely continue Star Fox Adventures soon after this, but I wanted to also record this because, uh, this, you know, this is just good old-fashioned fun. Alright, and I think it's... It's Lemmy's castle, isn't? No, or is it already Wendy's castle? Well, it's one. It's one or the other because they're the same. Yep. I don't know why I really like this level for some reason, even though it's a bit frustrating with like you know the uh, bullet bills flying all over the place. Yeah, and also this summer, um, you know, I did the um, or was that in the spring? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> Time is. Uh, Time, time is a weird concept, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> but I did a whole video about, uh, or, yeah, on my main channel about the, uh, about the Finnish Mario enemies, and, and because of that, I, I actually did a, quite a lot of research into the Finnish, uh, or rather, let's say, let's say the Scandinavian, or, no, no, not the Scandinavian, Nordic. The Nordic uh, distribution company uh, for Nintendo games, which is Berksala uh, AB, uh, based out of Sweden, and I came to discover that those guys, those guys, really, you know, you know, out of all all of like Nintendo's European distributors, Berksala were like the most kind of loyal and, uh, you know, just pretty rad overall because. You know, they started... Whoops, okay. Because they started working with Nintendo already in the early 80s. And you gotta remember, in the early 80s, Nintendo didn't have any consoles. What they had was the Game & Watch. But the guy who um, owned Berksala, uh, or it was one of the founding members, he had gone to, like, a business trip in Asia. He'd seen a Game & Watch, thought it was, like, the fucking bee's knees, and then... Bought like a thousand of them from Nintendo, but he actually wanted to buy even more, and he distributed them all over uh, Sweden. And apparently, at first they didn't take off that well, but then they made a deal with like a, I think, was it a watch company? Whoa, okay. Something went, something happened with the colors. Yeah, the colors suddenly got very, very bright. I don't know if you can see this. And I hope that didn't mess up with the capture. Now it's looking a bit dark, actually, but... Yeah, I don't know what happened. Like, the colors just suddenly swapped. I think that might be just... You know, I, I have a slightly cheapo uh, video capture uh, device. Don't be too surprised. Yeah, this is the first one with Kamek. I hate this one. Alright, now, now I got him out of my hair for a minute. Uh, but just a minute. Probably less than a minute, actually. Oh god. Uh. Okay, I want that P. Now I do want that P switch because this allows me to. Whoops! Okay. Okay. Nope. Okay, I want my fucking P wing first. Nope, not P wing! <laughs> uh, there were P wings in the Mario 3, that's why I said it. Okay, now. Because this. this ooh. Oh my god. You bitch. Because you get to skip a part of the level this way. Ah, uh, but this I, I do remember this. I actually got stuck on this when I was playing this just for funsies this summer. Um, yeah, now it looks really dark. I think I, I, I shouldn't have messed with the settings. But yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Berksala then did a deal with like a Swedish uh, watch uh, company. Or watch... Uh, 
um, a Swedish um, chain of watch stores. For them to sell Game & Watch is like just as a, you know, just as a, you know, a uh, secondary product. Apparently, in the in the middle of the 1980s, they, they, they sold a, they made a mint with that, apparently. Like, in the middle of the 1980s, like, Sweden had Game & Watch mania. And Berksala were so ahead of the curb that, um, that, that, um, uh, when that same business guy later went back to Japan in the early 80s to see what Nintendo was up to and he saw the Famicom he get this he, he not only he bought a Famicom and he bought a Japanese television and demoed it at, at, at his like you know at the company uh, and said like we we need to get in in in, in on the shindig because this this looks so fucking amazing and um, and they would have Berksala if they had been permitted they would have actually wanted to have become the first uh, company. Oh, it is let me, yeah. They would have become the first company in all of Europe to uh, import a Nintendo console, and they wanted to just, you know, they wanted to just import the Famicom. But uh, you know, because it was the mid '80s, it was the video game crash. Nintendo was very wary of um, doing any sudden moves. And then, you know, when they waited around long enough, you know, eventually they were gonna bring out the NES, and they just told. Um, Berksala to just be patient, you know, we're, we're actually coming out with a Western version of this console. Yeah, now the picture looks really dark. I mean, well, okay, I, I, I won't say it yet. Oh, wait, wait, we're outside. Mario has triumphed over Lemmy Koopa of Castle 3. Mario's quest is starting to get much more difficult. Have you found the red and green switches yet? I think we have. I mean, I think we got the green switch uh, in the previous uh, episode. So yeah, I, I don't think we're gonna beat the game this time, uh, but I'll I'll see how far I can uh, I'll be able to play. Now it doesn't look too, yeah. But there's literally only two levels here, and then it's already Ludwig's castle. Yeah. So um, so apparently, I was completely unaware of this as well. Like you know, um, I recently, recently, brought like a couple of years ago, I actually finally discovered that um. The NES and the Master Systems, the 7800, they only came out in Europe in uh, 87. So 87 was like a big year, and that's why uh, those consoles had a slightly more, um, you know, even playing field in the European market. Or that's, or so I have been told. Um, my experience is that Finland did, at least everybody I knew, you know, played Nintendo consoles. So I, I knew very few that have ever had a Master System. I do remember... A lot of people had Mega Drives, but the Master System is something that I I, I don't really recall taking it off because, off over here because, uh, well I, I well yeah because like it is true like I only only you know I only became you know aware of video games in the early '90s to begin with so maybe it was like like way past safe from the Master System but the NES remained like so relevant for so long. Uh, you know, uh, like, there were new games coming out all the time, and, like I said, everybody, everybody who, who I knew who had any kind of video game console, they usually had a Nintendo. So, I don't know, uh, I have to imagine, like, because that's all, that's the thing I hear also, is that the Sega systems were more popular in, uh, the word I keep hearing is Scandinavia, so, I have to assume that that means Sweden, Norway, Denmark, uh, that that's where they were popular, but I don't know. You know, Sega fan. If there's a Nor Finnish Sega fans who were old enough to remember that time, like uh, chime in in the comments if you know. But anyway, um, but yeah. So Berksala, like I said, Berksala were really gung ho, and apparently they managed to get the NES out in Sweden uh, at the end of '86 already. So, you know. You know, a bit earlier than the rest of Europe, which is like, which just shows like, you know, Bergsala were really, really tied with Nintendo. That that, and I, I think that is adorable. Uh, so it is also kind of weird because you know, um, the 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 you know the game distribution si situation in Europe in the '80s was so weird because most of the uh, big game companies actually didn't have European offices. Nintendo didn't. 
certainly. Uh, so Nintendo was entirely dependent on, um, by the way, Monty Moles. <laughs> I, I had to mention that because uh, my sister loved to play as Monty Mole in the... Well, not the newest uh, Mario Brothers anymore, but the one, was it, all, is it All Stars or what is it? Superstars, I think. I remember what's up here. Oh, this is the level, by the way. The, yeah, yeah this, this is the level that has, I think, a warp pipe that takes you back. So I'm not going to go into... I think it's this one. Because I went... I remember I went down it like twice previously. <laughs> Yoshi, here we go. All right. Yeah, so... Um, so various like toy companies and such were responsible for... Um... Oh, okay. It did that again. I, I I got freaked out because I didn't remember that this that this is a thing that happens. It's just you get this weird um, cloud that gives you these coins. I don't know how how long it like keeps doing that. Is it just like forever? Oh no no no! We haven't gotten the green. Oh. Okay. Okay. I think. I think we're gonna backtrack a bit uh, to get the green palace as well because because uh, yeah, getting the block palace it, it just makes things a lot easier. So what I was getting at is that you know the, the game distribution situation in Europe was so weird back in those days that actually uh, or wait a minute wait, I, I can actually check the map. Yes, all right. Let's quickly check. Yeah, we didn't get the uh, green palace. All right. I mean, I I, I assumed as much because I, I I guess I didn't actually ever intend to come back to this game. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Berksala actually did distribute Sega games as well, which is weird. Because, and I know this, uh, this is something that I wasn't aware of, but it only occurred to me when my sister got me the, um, got me the Mega Drive for Christmas a couple of, or quite a few years ago already. Okay, it looks a bit better, but not much. Yeah. So, um, so uh, when my sister got that um, uh, Mega Drive, she also got um, well. She had three games that were in box, and two they were Sonic One and Two and Chuck Rock. And Sonic One or Sonic Two, one or the other had uh, one or the other had actually still had the manual inside. And it says Berk, and it was in translated in Finnish, and it said Berksala in the back. So you know, <laughs> so that that shocked me. That surprised me because I remember how uh, vicious the uh, console war, like even up here, all up here, even in this shindig uh, in, in the Nordics. Like I, I remember the 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 console war being quite vicious. But yeah, but that that comes to show that in Europe, like you know, for practicality reasons. You know, you might end up having exactly the same business partners as your competitors. <laughs> it's such a smaller market. Oh, it's this, yeah. Okay. So I can't take Yoshi with me. Oop. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Alright. Oh, wait, 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 wait! Oh. Okay, can I... Because I just remembered. Yoshi can... Yeah! Alright. <laughs> I forgot that, 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 that this was a thing. Oh, well, then I did. Ah, I ended up using... Well, okay. I can't use use Yoshi in the uh, in the castle either. Oof, that was, em that was embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, I'm not gonna bother with these guys. I mean, I got nine extra lives. I think I'm good. He does keep hold of the shell. I'm, I'm a bit impressed with that, actually, that he doesn't just lose it in the uh, pipe. Also, in the Star Fox Let's Play, I was talking about uh, that I have another series which is incomplete. Like this one, I didn't, I never, I just did it as a one-off because I never actually intended that I was going to come back to this. I just did it again, and I, uh, the only reason I'm doing it now is because I, I have the Jones to play me some Super Mario World. But, but hey, uh, yeah, I'd really like to hear from people, like, if, if you checked out the Metroid Prime 3 Let's Play, like, should I keep going? Because, um... Uh, because playing Star Fox, it, it honestly is, is giving me the kind of uh, feeling like I, I kind of want to go back to that. Because I genuinely love Metroid Prime 3, and the only reason I stopped the series was because that last batch of episodes where I fucked up the recording and I got a little demoralized because of that. Which is, you know, 
Nothing new for me. I have had that happen a few times. There's an entire Let's Play series that I nuked at one point as well, uh, because uh, uh, I got, you know, uh, I wasn't happy with the quality. That uh, was the Jazz Jackrabbit 2. Oh, God. The Jazz Jackrabbit 2 series, uh, Let's Play series. And the reason I wasn't happy with that is because I kept changing um, the uh, game resolutions between... And also, that was in a, in a time when my recorder settings were a bit... Uh, I was using... I don't remember what the pr recording program I was using, but I had really shit settings for it. And sorry if the picture quality in this doesn't doesn't look the greatest either. Uh, that's just, like I said, this is a GPO uh, capture card that I'm using. And the reason I use a GPO capture card is because uh, the last really you know, expensive one that I got broke after two years, and, you know, if I, if I have to, you know, if, if this one breaks, you know, you know, you know, I won't be so disappointed because, you know, it didn't cost me that much, and I can just probably buy a new one. Although, I am getting a bit worried these days. RCA seems to be really, really going away with the, with the Dodo, but, and, it might be like, you know, at some point I'm gonna have to finally buy an HDMI recording device. Which, the thing is like, I'm only, I'm only apprehensive about that because I don't know what those things look like and I don't know how they work. The only HD capable machine that I've recorded from, uh, in HD quality, which is funny to say because, of course, the games are all retro games. It's, it's my Xbox One. And the only reason I keep do, using that one is because it has a built-in capture thing. So I don't have to... So I don't have to worry about, like, uh, you know, external parts or uh, other machinery. I, 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 and listen, the capture card, there, there is a reason why I keep using it. Because it's just fucking nice that I have a thing that I can just fucking plug into the computer directly from the machine. And like this, like, I, you know... I could be using a splitter and playing this on the TV, but no, I'm just playing this with the capture window. Oh, I love this, by the way. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> it hits that hill, and it gets a little bandage. Ludwig von Koopa's days of composing Koopa symphonies in Castle 4 are over. The forest of illusion lies ahead. Mario must use his brain to solve the puzzle of this perplexing forest. All right. Let's see if we can, we can at least make it through the forest of illusions. That, this is always, always, I, I always get very nervous here because I always, because I'm not entirely sure. Um, okay, uh, I, I, I know, I know both the secret route and the, uh, and here's Wiggler. Wiggler's grand debut in the Mario series. So I don't know the, like, um, if I have to go to the ghost house... Uh, for this to work. It, it's w really weird because I only did this last th during the summer and I, I already forgot. But I I if it turns out indeed that um, uh, last time I went straight for the, you know, the secret route. But this time I'm going to try to do the, I'm going to do the official route first. Because it gets me into that uh, water level and whoop. And... Uh, the water level gets me to the green palace. No, 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 not the green palace. The blue palace, yeah. I also actually, I, I really, really, this summer, I really wanted to watch some of the old video game movies uh, with my sister and my brother-in-law. But we never just, unfortunately, got around to it. A part of it was that we actually had some other movies that we were watching um, this summer. But I, I was on a, on a bit of a, you know, nostalgia trip. So, uh, you know, I really... Would have wanted to have watched, for instance, the Mario movie. Because uh, the Mario movie, I've stated before, is... Uh, I mean, the Mario movie is not, like, a good Mario... It's not It's not a good Mario movie, but it isn't actually a bad movie, in my opinion. It's actually quite entertaining, and I do enjoy it quite a lot. Um, one of my favorite things is just the fact, like, how mad Bob Hoskins is in it that <laughs> half the time. Yeah. I also have a video on my main channel where I talked about the extended, uh, restored cut of the movie that came out, um, last year, yeah, yeah, the, um, there was a, there, you know, that, that movie, you know, you know, one good indication of how that movie, uh, actually has a pretty decent reputation these days is the simple fact that, you know, there's been a, for, 
a couple of years, fans were, you know, trying to uncover and restore some of the missing scenes. Uh, I did say, uh, you know, not to spoil the video too badly, but my, my end conclusion was that I actually didn't like the extended cut as much as the finished movie, but that's just because the extended cut is very, very rough. Like, uh, scenes that they put back in the film, um, I honestly feel, feel like they just, a lot of them just, ah, son of a bitch. Because I honestly don't feel like most of them really added much to the, to the movie. So, uh, this enemy, by the way, this is a Rip Van Fish. <laughs> In reference to Rip Va Van Winkle, which I don't know if people necessarily even know anymore what that is. Like, the Rip Van Winkle thing was an old, old cartoon trope. I remember the Flintstone episode. That was a take on that where Fred fell asleep in at, at the at the uh, roots of the tree, and then woke up uh, and everything had moved on to the future and he was all confused about it. All right, so now we're gonna get the uh, switch palace at least. Oh yeah, that's another thing. I actually uh, this summer I also rediscovered my love for oh uh, I did not mean to do that. Uh, forget about that. I actually rediscovered my love for Quack Pack. Uh, so I started watching Quack Pack on my, when I was over at my sister's on Disney Plus. And, uh, okay, so one thing about Quack Pack is that, you know, uh, you should not look at it the same way as you look at a show like DuckTales or Rescue Rangers. Uh, I, it's more akin to, like, Goof Troop. It's, it's super cartoony and I think really, really a lot of fun. Um, uh, but also, it is, <laughs> first of all, it has really, really horny energy, like half the episodes, not all of them, but a lot, a lot of, a lot of the episode premises, they kick off because Huey, Dewey, and Louie are trying to hit on a girl, or alternately because they're trying to get rich, but like the dragon episode, I love that one, like they have like the business, uh, they, they go to this, uh, kingdom that still lives, uh, like, as if it was the Middle Ages, and uh, they make Donald their king. And, you know, that that episode was great. I loved it. But, um, yeah, so... Um, it, it, yeah, the, the, the thing that I was really, really, really... Uh, got me really hooked on it is that... Uh, I think officially now, quack, quack, the Quack Pack version of Daisy... Uh, is my uh, favorite version of Daisy because <laughs> because I did because I didn't know she was voiced by Cat Susie and I absolutely fucking love Cat Susie. She's one of my all-time favorite voice actresses. If you don't know who she is, uh, she's been in so much stuff. It's kind of difficult to just pick one. I remember her from Captain Planet and the Planeteer. She was Linka in that, but she's been in a ton of t stuff. Like, um, well, on this channel, actually, uh, I have a Let's Play of Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. She's Tavion in that. And she was that. She was also uh, Tavion, also in the um, in the um, in the in the previous game, which was Jedi Outcast. And I have a let's play of that on my main channel, actually. Uh, but also, like uh, Donald, Donald also just makes that show for me. Like you know, I've never been the, like the biggest Donald Duck fan, but I think now now I actually I appreciate his like you know <laughs> just how fucking pissed he gets all the time. <laughs> all right. Okay, so, uh, what I was talking about, like, uh, so there's all these alternate, I think every level here has an alternate route, so the alternate route from here takes us to the left where the ghost house is, and I don't remember if you have to beat the ghost house to get out, or is it enough that I, um, if there's a secret passage somewhere in here, and that's what I need to get out of the forest, so sorry, I, it, it looked like, uh, I have a bad habit of doing this, but it looks like I'm streamlining my way through the forest, because, the summer when I played this, I actually went to the ghost house. Oh yeah, and the, the fact that... Yeah, so so the reason I didn't know Cat Susie was the voice uh, was obviously because when I watched Quack Pack back in the day, uh, it was the finished dubbed version. Which wasn't bad, but, you know, a lot of jokes didn't... You know, some, quite a lot of the jokes didn't, like, translate very well. And, um... And, uh, the... the, the I talked about in the DuckTales uh, Let's Play, I talked about... Or was it DuckTales 2? Either, either or. Uh, I talked about the Finnish voice for um, Donald. It's been the same voice actor. And I think it still is the same voice actor. I think they might have only had to change it for 
Or I don't know if they did it for the new DuckTales, because in that, Donald... Uh, well, he does speak in the duck voice, but there's also... Uh, I think in the... During the second season, he loses his duck voice. And he starts speaking like a normal person. Uh, I don't know if they still use the same voice actor for that, but uh, the point that I was getting at is like... Uh, especially during the DuckTales era, because I... Because I remember back in 2012, I actually rewatched a few finished dubbed DuckTales episodes, which, to be fair, like, I watched DuckTales more... That, that's a show that I w did watch in English, because it wasn't dubbed when I was uh, very young. Um, I do not... I, ca I cannot, honestly, for the death of me, understand what Donald says in the finished dub. Like, the, the, the dialogue is so... <laughs> oh, I was wondering where the fish came from. Oh my god, no, this is bad. Yoshi, come back! <laughs> Jesus, this is a fucking shit show. What this is? Okay, fuck, fuck game. Forget this. Ugh. Come on, finish, finish off the. All right. Oof. Okay. Oh no, is it that? Oh no. Okay, I think I got. Oh yeah, I'm running out of time too. Oh god. Oh no, was it the? Was it that pipe? Oh my god, I, I am... Ugh, I think I fucked it up. It might be this final pipe, actually. It is! Oh no, and now I'm a little Mario, I can't get through here. S bitch. Okay. So I have to go through that again. <sighs> Damn, that sucked. Yeah, so, uh... So I remember watching the finished dub version of uh, Quack Pack. Okay, well, yeah, this takes us to the ghost house. Okay, now, now, now that I remember, now that I know that's the final pipe, I'm just gonna make sure to first be Big Mario, and then not, like, <laughs> fuck things up. I kind of like... Oh, my God. I was about to say, I, I like the fact that the bob -ombs have those big... The, those uh, five-pointed star explosions, because that's what they also did in Mario 3. Which actually... Uh, this is something that I, I haven't played. I have not played um, Super Mario All-Stars in, like, forever. So, because I'm kind of curious. Oh. Okay, good. Now I got a mushroom. Uh, gotta just now be careful not to, you know, lose. Lose it. Uh, so... Oh my God! You know what? I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and I'm gonna just get a like, power up right right the right from the get go. Something about Quack Pack. What what was I about to say about Quack Pack? Yeah, well, so uh, basically, I guess I guess what I was trying to get at was that that I really love just the crazy zaniness of that. But um, you know, even as a when I was younger, I, I felt like that show wasn't on the same grade as some of the other Disney cartoons. In fact, I do feel like. That's, that that kind of you know that that kind of holds true for a lot of um, those later. Oh wait wait wait! I can I can exit now. What? I don't I don't have to I don't have to play through the whole level. I don't know why I was doing that. Maybe just do. I mean I didn't want two I did want two power ups. Uh, the Yoshi was just kind of an extra, and you know the dub quality wasn't like bad or anything on those. But yeah, you know the fact that it's like all. That in the English version, it's like all voice actors that I knew, that I know, uh, you know, just, you know, it ad it adds a lot to the package. Uh, yeah, also kind of extreme, another funny thing is just the fact that not only is uh, Katsuzi the voice of Tavion on there, uh, the re and the reason I bring that, I even bring that up is because Jeff Bennett, of course, who's Kyle Gatarn in the, uh, in the Jedi Knight games, son of a bitch! What did I just say about not fucking up? Yeah, so, you know, so because so because it's those two voice actors in there, uh, that's why, uh, that's why I really, really, uh, just enjoyed Quack Pack a lot more now. And just like, you know, it's, it's like when I watch an episode of Goof Troop these days, like, I just appreciate the comedy so much. Oh my god, no! No, I'm right at the finish line. No! 
No son of a bitch. There are no mushrooms here either. You fucking football playing asshole. Please, please tell me there's a, there's a mushroom in one of these. Regardless of what I say from here on out, this is my least favorite level now. Yeah, no. Just not a goddamn thing here. Ugh. And the, the shitty part about this is like, uh, yeah. I'm thinking actually uh, that I'm gonna end it before we get to Roy's castle, but... Uh, well, I guess because there there is no checkpoint for that other level. Okay. Okay, that's one. And let's get another one. Just for just another one for the road. <laughs> wow. Sorry, I, I'm get, I'm starting to get I'm starting to fume a bit. Oh there is there was a checkpoint. Okay. Oh and there was a mushroom as well. Okay, but yeah, no 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 fucking around now. Let's just let's just try to get through here without <sighs> screwing things up. I don't need Yoshi, I don't need Yoshi. I just need to get through this asshole. No! Oh, okay, okay. Jump, jump, you fuck. Yes! Whew. Okay. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. And I don't remember what Roy's castle was like. Did it have the sparkies? Because I remember that's that's the next one I had, had some problems with. Okay, but we're gonna do... We're gonna do this. Let's go through the castle... Uh, oh no, it's the snake. Yeah, I hated this one. Because uh, there's there's gonna be those Bodobos that show up. Uh, yeah, these guys. And their patterns are apparently not set in stone. They might, you know, if I'm lucky, there's, there's like a bottleneck point. And if I get lucky, they'll um, pass on through. But if I get unlucky, and there's there's another one like where where I need to have a power up and a backup power up because, oh, actually yeah, I I should not run. Yeah, I just realized. Yeah, no, I, this is what I was talking about. Yeah, because oh, I did manage to get through. Okay, because sometimes they follow you, sometimes they don't. Like they if they get stuck by in the uh, this snake, which by the way, this this honestly gives me. Yeah, there's something like this in, I think, Mega Man 5. And this bike corridor also gets me. Ooh. Okay. And I think that's the end of the line. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have because of the Bowsers. Alright. Fucking Bodobos. I hate their guts. Give me, give me. No, okay, fuck this then. Okay, no power up for Roy. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, and I had some trouble with this as well because uh, I kind of get. Yeah, uh, yeah, I kept jumping on him too early. It bothers me that he's blue now and not, you know, red like he was in originally. But luckily he isn't too much. He's exactly the same as Morden. Morden wasn't too bad either. Okay, but I think uh, we'll finish it off there. I mean, I mean, we'll read the end text and then we'll end it there. <coughs> going on here. Mamma mia! Mario found his way through the forest of illusion and has put an end to Roy Koopa of Castle 5. Onward to the dangerous but tasty Chocolate Island. <laughs> Alright. Chocolate Island has some really uh, weird levels. And this is probably the hardest world so far. I mean, before we get to the Bowser world, obviously, but... Alright. But... Uh, this has been this episode. I'm Hanu the Hanu the Hunter back in and see you on the next one. Bye bye.